you had before, you know, you got the SSA, SSW, SS, whatever, and you get the MSA, the MSWs, you get the F calculations. It's very, very similar to the previous ANOVA table, moved it over, except, you know, a couple of more lines to the table, a couple of more columns. It's just a little more complicated. But I'm not going to hold you responsible for doing those calculations. Uh, what I will hold you responsible for is to look at a picture. Now, in this case, would you say there's interaction? And the answer is yes, because it shows that it shows that you can't make a cross-the-board statement. If you can't make a cross-the-board statement that drug number three is better for everybody, then you have interaction. In other words, you can't, in other words, when things are more complicated, there's interaction. So, can somebody jump to the conclusion I'm trying to get to? What would the picture look like when there's no interaction? Yes. When they're, when they're very good, when they're parallel, when the two lines are roughly, again, that's not be pertinent, statistics not like geometry. If they're roughly parallel, we say the two lines, there's no interaction. So for example, if this would have been the picture for the males, which it is, one, two, and three, and this would have been the picture for the females. Okay, so what would be, so let's talk about all the possible hypotheses. First of all, again, this is now called a two-way analysis of variance. Because we have a second factor that's relevant for us that we care about, namely, are the drugs different? Are the males and females different? So we have to have another set of hypotheses. We wish we put those right over here. A0, that males, called 1 and 2 again, but really now it's 1 and 2 refers to not drug 1 and 2, but not drug 1 and 2, but males and females. Are the drugs the same? Or can we put down the H1 that they're not the same? But now we have a third hypothesis. So again, to when, when you set up the experiment this way, there are three questions you want to answer. Are the drugs all the same? That question is still there. Are the males and females the same? That question is also still there. Well, what's, what's the third question we can now answer that we have a two-way analysis of variance? What other question could we potentially answer that I really po I talked about, and maybe you're not aware of the fact you can pose it as a hypothesis, and that is, is there interaction or not? You want to know, does the picture look something like this or something like that? So the quote, H0, there's no, we usually took the negative, no interaction. And H1 would be yes interaction, or there is some interaction. Okay, so let's try to answer. All I want you to do for the homework, in case I hope I'll make it clear in the next couple of minutes, and certainly on a, on a test question, is to look at, to take your data, to plot it, and by looking at the picture to try to answer all three questions. So let's try to answer all three questions, both in this case, in this case, maybe another example. In this case here, would you say that there's interaction? Well, again, drug number three is better for the females. Drug number three is better for the males. And so you can, in other words, drug number three is better across the board. You, know, you don't have to qualify your statement according to the other group when you make your simple statement. So there's a simple statement that's true here. Drug number three is the best drug. So is there interaction? The answer is no, no interaction, okay? Here, you can make a simple statement, drug number three is better. It's better for the males, but it's worse for the females. So you got, they, there you have interaction. So the bottom line is when you take your data, and how do you graph your data? You take the, the average of this group of numbers, you make a dot. The average here, you make another dot. The average here, you make another dot. The average of these three numbers, in other words, each subcategory has its own basically one dot on the page. And then you connect all the dots and you have a picture like this. When the lines are parallel, or roughly parallel, you say there's no interaction. When they cross, for example, be, this case would be a case of extreme interaction. They're crossing, okay? In this case, there would be interaction. Here, there's no interaction. But we can also answer the other. Once we decide there's no interaction, let's go back. Can you, are the males and females the same? Well, it looks like the females are, are consistently better than the males. They're better for drug one, they're be doing better than drug two, and they're doing better in drug three. Females are different than males on all three drugs. So this uh, you basically would, would prove the H1 in that case. On the other hand, if the picture looks something like this, this is the male picture and this is the female picture. They're basically the same. So this would be, you basically prove the A0. So of course the question is how far apart do they have to be, and that of course really requires the right formula, but you know, if it's pretty obviously far apart, they're far apart. Let me, uh, one more thing before, um, let's say for example, I'll take one last question, one last example. Let's say this represents the, the, the experience of the males, in other words, the drugs are basically the same. And this, this represents the experience for the females. Now do these lines cross? Not really. Are they parallel? Not really. So would you say that this kind of picture, there's interaction or no interaction? There is interaction because you can say for the males, all three drugs are the same. For the females, 
drug number three is clearly better. So you can't make a, if you can't make a simple across the board statement, you have interaction. Okay, now what was your question? Okay, so this will be an example. This, there is interaction. And this will be, now, 